this is Hannah Farmer from the Seguin Public Library. Welcome to our next See Seguin video. We are here at the Teatro de Artes de Juan Seguin on New Braunfels Street, and we are going to see costumes, dancing, music, and maybe some surprises. So let's go on inside. Hello everybody, my name is Yvonne de la Rosa, and I am the executive director at Teatro de Artes de Juan Seguin. Teatro de Artes de Juan Seguin is a cultural arts center and a cultural arts organization that promotes the better understanding of the Mexican-American culture through the study, teaching, and practice and performance of the arts. Here at Teatro, we provide lots of different events and activities for the Seguin community and also surrounding communities. So Teatro's flagship program is the Ballet Folklorico de la Rosa, which was incorporated in, on July 9th, 1982. This program has been around the longest and has seen generations and generations of students come to learn about the different dances and regions in Mexico. They have many different costumes that they use to perform. And on top of that, they learn traditional dance steps so that they can make sure that we stay true to the culture and traditions of that region in Mexico. Our next program is the Mariachi Juan Seguin. Our Mariachi Juan Seguin started in 1985. It has been going for a very long time. And what we do with mariachi is we teach them how to play the guitar, the guitarron, also the vihuela, trumpet, violin, and even the harp. We're excited that our mariachi program has grown and that you can see students that are performing not just here at Teatro, but also at the junior high and high school level here in Seguin. The ballet and mariachi are open to students of any age. In the Ballet Flacorico program, we take students who are the age of five all the way to an adult class. We also have mariachi for eight-year-olds to 80. And when I say 80, because that is closest to the age of our oldest participant that we have this year. So Teatro takes pride in making sure that we educate not only the youth, but adults in our community about the Mexican-American culture. We make sure that we discuss with our students uh, about the different regions. What are some of the industries in the region? We teach them names of dances. We also teach them the importance of understanding what each dance means. The dance itself is poetry in motion. Poetry in motion because it tells a story. It can tell a story about going to pick turtle eggs for food. It also can talk about many different things, uh, but the stories are what are most important. In our mariachi program, we, we also teach music theory. And I think that's extremely important to know is that they're not only coming here to learn an instrument, they're also learning about music theory. We take pride in, in, in using uh, education as a vehicle for our students to learn more about their culture. Hello everyone, my name is Victor Manuel Briceño. I am originally from Kingsville, Texas, but I currently reside in San Marcos, Texas. I attend Texas State University where I am receiving my undergrad in music education, specifically with a choral emphasis, and I am also receiving a mariachi minor. My role here at Teatro is mariachi director. So here at Teatro, I work with the beginner, intermediate, and advanced groups. I specifically specialize with guitar uh, and guitarron and guitarra de golpe, any kind of those specific instruments if we have them. That's what we would call our armonia section. And then I also work with the vocalists. I work with all the age groups, you know, whatever teatro accepts. Uh, the youngest, I believe, is around eight years old. Mm -hmm. And then it can go as old as 80, <laughs> whatever, <laughs> whoever's willing to come and learn. He tu, he tu que te creías el rey de todo el mundo, y tu que nunca fuiste capaz de perdonar, y cruel y despiadado de todo te reías. Oh, imploras cariño, aunque sea por piedad. 
¿A dónde está tu orgullo? ¿A dónde está el coraje? Porque hoy que estás vencido, mendigas caridad. Y a veces que no es lo mismo amar que ser amado. Hoy que estás acabado, qué lástima me das. Can you tell us what that song was uh, called and a little bit about that song? Yes, so that song is called Fallaste Corazón. Um, originally, a lot of people tend to think, just based off of the lyrics, that when you're singing it, you're almost singing it to your significant other. Mm -hmm. So typically, it's a man who sings it, and they tend to go, Y tú que te creías el rey de todo el mundo. Like, you think you're king of the world, but you're really not. <laughs> but if you look into the lyrics more and more, he's kind of talking to himself. And so he's saying, Maldito corazón. I'm the one with the bad heart. I'm the one that's laughing at my own suffering. Interesting. I love it. Um, when you're teaching some of the youngest kids here at Teatro, um, what are some techniques that you might use? So I try to make singing as fun as possible for all the ages, at the same time still being educational. So I, of course, always teach them about posture and about right breathing and stuff like that. But at the same time, I don't want to choose repertoire or songs that they're going to get bored with. So I like to pick something that's more going to get their attention, maybe something upbeat, maybe something that just sounds really pretty and is easy to sing. Great. So how should um, a kid stand uh, when, they're, when they're singing? Can you tell us a bit yes. more about posture? So when we talk about posture, typically it's feet shoulder width apart. Uh, from there, it's personal preference. I like to stand with one foot in front of the other whenever I'm singing. Uh, that just leaves me with a nice, good balance and it makes me feel comfortable. Uh, we always talk about having the body up. When you start singing and you're singing correctly, this diaphragm, this stomach is going in, and so typically singers tend to do this and hunch over forward. We always like to remind our singers to push that chest up as the stomach goes in. And then of course, chin is just up and your face is forward to the audience. So I, I just wanna clear up a common misconception really okay. quickly concerning mariachi singing. Mm -hmm. So since I am a vocal student at Texas State, I am required to not only sing classical music, but also mariachi music, since my minor is in mariachi, and I perform with Latin Music Studies at Texas State, which is, by the way, a very, very new thing. We're probably the only university in the world that does that right now. Um, and so while doing that, I've learned that a big misconception that people tend to have is that mariachi is yelling. Mariachi is not yelling while you tend to have to sing loud because you have a mariachi accompanying you and that's a bunch of instruments. Mm -hmm. We believe in healthy, supported belting. So yes, it is loud, but it is safer for the voice compared to yelling. So yelling tends to just be uh, something that just comes out of your body, usually tenses up the throat a lot and uh -huh. is very loud and uncontrolled. While belting tends to be a very good analysis of the body and knowing how much air you're pushing, know much how much air you're taking, using all the correct muscle sets and just allowing it to flow out of the body naturally mm -hmm. versus putting actual strain on the body. And you'll see belting in opera. Mm -hmm. It's the same classical technique. So in terms of breathing, we always want to make sure that we breathe in from the diaphragm. The diaphragm is a muscle that's right underneath the lungs. But it's important to understand that when we say breathe in from the diaphragm, the diaphragm is not a third lung. The diaphragm is just a muscle that drops and it allows our lungs to expand more. So the way we do this is we have to breathe from here. This stomach has to actually move forward. So I'm gonna breathe in from the front so you can see this. This is me breathing correctly. This is a side view. If you notice, we tend to have two types of breathers in the room, which I am not. One is the ch chest breather. They tend to go, and the shoulders. We don't want any of that when we're singing. We want everything relaxed and just coming from here. Now let's make sure that that diaphragm works by doing a simple breath exercise. 
I love doing this one. All we're gonna do is hiss, and we're gonna do very short hisses. We're gonna go tss, 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 tss. And you should see this muscle actually come back, and you should see the chest pop a little bit. So try that with me, go tss. Try a long one. Exactly. And that's what we want to do to work on our breathing. As for vocal warm ups, one of my favorite ones to do, I like to call the hunga. And the reason why is because you're going to say hung and it's going to get all in your nose. When we sing, we don't want to sound like this. So we want to get all that nasal quality out by going hung. And then you're going to go ga. So Hunga, and then you're just gonna fall down the scale. Hunga. If you know solfege, that's just so so fa mi re do. And also, I wanted to ask if you could tell us more about your costume. Is this a traditional mariachi costume? Yeah. So this is what we call the traje de charro. Uh, so this is something that has been around probably almost a hundred years. Originally, uh, when you trace back to the history of mariachi and you're looking at the 1890s and the early 1900s, you tend just to see mariachis wearing, you know, whatever's kind of there in their hometown, whether that's a white shirt, black pants, white shirt, white pants, uh, that's how it was done. But nowadays we've kind of standardized it. This, I would say, is probably the staple uh, when it comes to traje, it's just a regular plain black traje and what we call gala, which is these metal pieces. Mm -hmm. But then you might see fancier ones that have some embroidery. And so um, as a music major, a musician, somebody that's studying music in college, what would you say to kids that are also interested in music and um, what advice would you give them? I say pursue your dreams. Uh, I came from a small town Kingsville, we had our own university. We also have a music program there and it's a great one. Uh, but I was stuck there for 18 years. I wanted to branch out. Uh, I had heard of Texas State just for a little bit. I heard how great their mariachi program was. And I just decided to come on a whim and I love it. I don't regret a thing. I always tell students, you know, if it's a financial issue, start looking at financial aid and scholarships and grants. If it's just that you're scared, Maybe take a year at home and then branch out. But I always say follow your dreams and if music's what you want to do, pursue music. Very good advice. Thank you, Victor. Hello, Seguin community members, uh, young and old, local and afar. My name is Beto Rincon. I am the artistic director of the Ballet Folklorico de la Rosa. We are a, a traditional Mexican folk dancing group right here in Seguin, Texas. And we are housed inside of the Teatro de Artes de Juan Seguin Cultural Arts Center, uh, where we have been doing these classes and other classes for the last 38 years. At Ballet Fuego de la Rosa, we uh, accept kids uh, five and up. And we also do have adult classes. So our classes are pretty much five to 18. Uh, kids typically, when they go off to college, they stop coming to our classes. Or then we also have an adult class for anybody older than 18. I have been dancing ballet folklorico since I was four years old. And I've been teaching ballet folklorico um, since I was 15 years old. And the first place I've ever taught ballet folklorico was right here in this building when I was 15. And now I'm the artistic director of the ballet folklorico de la Rosa. I am really excited to be with you uh, today to show you and to teach you a little bit of, uh, a little bit more about Ballet Focorico. I am going to teach you about the term zapateado. Now I also teach in the schools and we've been talking about what zapateado is and it means to strike with one's foot. A zapatear is to strike uh, your shoe onto the ground, usually made of wood. And I'm gonna show you today one of my favorite forms of zapateado, and it is called the caretilla step, okay? So I am going to break it down all the way from the very beginning of this step. So 
Uh, zapateado is many different types of steps, but the caretilla is basically this. So I'll talk to you in terms of your right and left feet, your right and left heel, and your right and left uh, ball of your foot. Those are the uh, parts of your feet that you're gonna use. And so really, really quickly, the fastest I can do this step is this. And so now we're going to go all the way back to really, really slow so that you can see exactly how I'm doing that step, okay? And I'm actually going to turn around so that you can, so this is actually like what, how you're practicing it right now. So you're going to go right foot stomp, opposite foot heel, right, left, left, right, right, left. left, left, right, okay, or stomp, heel, stomp, heel, stomp, heel, stomp, heel, stomp, heel. And when I'm stomping, I am using all of my foot, my heel, the ball, and even some toe, okay, the whole foot is hitting the ground. Then when I get to the heel part, it is the high heel part of my shoe. Okay, also, you may be wondering, who is this man wearing high heels? Okay, this is not a high heel, it's called a tacon, it's a dance shoe, and it is not a tap at the bottom, but a series of nails. Okay, those are nails. These are not tap shoes, these are ballet flocorico uh, uh, zapatos, okay? Botines, boots. Your parents may, be, may know all of these vocabulary words, okay, botines. When we're doing ballet folklorico dances, sometimes the shoes are black, sometimes they are white, like the ones I'm wearing. I've also seen uh, maroon, tan, there's different uh, colored shoes. They also correspond to what the person dancing is wearing, okay? Also, this shirt that I'm wearing is called a guayabera. It is a four square pocket shirt. Um, and we can use these shirts when we're dancing Veracruz, which uh, is a state in Mexico. And the dance I'm gonna show you is actually uh, for, uh, La Bamba, which is from Veracruz. Those of you watching this video can watch uh, me do that step, practice it at home, and then eventually all you need to do to speed it up practice um, not tightening up from your thighs down but getting a little looser and then what I tell my students is letting your feet fly right so as long as you're hitting your heel and the ball of your foot just work on the speed okay and so this song is a good example of um, uh, when you're able to do the step really fast okay now I'm going to show you uh, the caretilla uh, and it's going to be danced during the song of uh, La Bamba. Now, uh, just to note, this is going to be done really, really, really fast, much faster than what I taught you. So I'm just going to jump in. more about the costuming and why it's important to have costumes from all of the different regions in Mexico? So it's important 
all throughout the states of Mexico, they have particular traditional costumes that they wear to perform their traditional folklore dances. And so here at the Adro, we have a room full of costuming from the states of Puebla, from San Luis Potosí, Jalisco, Veracruz, just to name a few. We also have costumes from the Aztec time when we perform our Aztec traditional dances. It's important to show culture, tradition, and heritage by staying true to the costuming that we use here at our cultural arts center with our students. Wonderful. Can you tell us about more of the programs that Teatro offers for the community? So Teatro offers numerous programs, one being culinary arts classes, the other being our summer agroecology and art, where we talk about uh, food and also art, combine those two together. We also have events such as poetry and prose events, lecture series, and also an opportunity to come and learn to do traditional arts and crafts. So how can people get involved uh, with Teatro? So Teatro is open to anyone who would love to learn more about the Mexican culture. We start our classes in September and we run a calendar year until May when we have a huge annual recital, usually held at Jackson Auditorium, where the students are able to show what they have learned throughout the year. We also, uh, so registration usually begins in, in, in August. For the different events that we have through Teatro, we have our website, www.teatrodeartes.org, that you can go and find our calendar of events, find information about registering for ballet or mariachi, or any other information that you'd like to know about the organization, our co-founders, our mission, our goals, and the things that we do here at the author. Wonderful. And for fun, can you tell us more about the room that we're in and this cool mural behind you? Sure, so this room is called the mural room. As you can see, we have a beautiful mural and on this side of the room, you're going to see the depiction of the building which is the old Our Lady of Guadalupe Church Hall, which is blue. We have the instrumentation from our Conjunto Juan Seguin program that we had for many years. This piece was drawn by one of our very own, Alejandro Luis Guerra. He came in and added this piece to the mural. On the mural, you're also going to see papel picado uh, at the very top, which is very festive. If we turn around and we start moving, to the opposite side, you'll find that we have our logo at the top and also what we do here at the Teatro. On this side, we have our Ballet Folgorico de la Rosa, which is, um, like I said, our flagship. And all of these people that you see in the photos are people that came through our program. The Veracruz dancer is Liliana Guerra. The Veracruz male dancer is Albert Alberto Rincón, who is our artistic director. You have the mariachis, who are Rene and Carlos Moreno. And in the window, you see Delisa Davila, who is here watching through the window at all of her friends. So cool. There is so much history uh, in this building. Is there anything else that you want to share about the history of this location? Sure, so Teatro was, never really had a true home until the mid-1990, until mid-1996. That is when we acquired this building, which was the Our Lady Guadalupe Church that turned into the church hall, then was cut to bring from Guadalupe Street to this property here. This property has a lot of history and tradition. Um, and one day we hope that you guys will come and learn more about that here at our building. Well, thank you for sharing so much about what Teatro offers this community of Seguin and the surrounding areas. Thank you again uh, to our instructors too that taught us so much.